Okay, so now we're going to talk about identifying macromolecules in a food lab. Okay, now uh, this is talking about identifying a positive test for uh, proteins, carbohydrates, and lipids. We don't have a test for this uh, for um, nucleic acids, but we do for proteins, carbohydrates, and lipids. Um, this is a uh, you know a, a normally a hands-on lab that you would do in the classroom, and I wish that I could just wave a magic wand and you guys would be exempt from that, but you're not. So it's still on your EOC and you still have to learn these things and I hate that you don't get to do the lab but there's really uh, no way that you could do it at home. Okay. So carbohydrates, proteins, and fats are all essential nutrients. We cannot manufacture these nutrients so we must obtain them from our environment. And we can uh, manufacture proteins in our bodies just so we know, you know, you know that. But we do need to obtain some of the essential amino acids um, uh, from our diet. In this lab, with the use of indicators as chemical detection tools, you will analyze a variety of foods for the presence of nutrients. Detection is based upon observing a chemical change that takes place most often uh, a, a change in color, okay? So the ob objective is to identify the presence of major nutrients such as simple carbohydrates uh, or monosaccharides or glucose compared to complex carbohydrates, starch or um, Um, uh, polysaccharides um, and then proteins and fats and common foods. What is an indicator? Indicators are chemical compounds used to check the presence of other compounds. So we're going to use something called an indicator to um, see if we can find um, compounds present in, um, we can do that in food, um, we can do that for, you know, if we wanted, we were doing a biopsy and we wanted to know what someone's stomach contents contained, we could use an indicator to test to see if there's a presence of these compounds. Okay, so here we have our indicators that we're going to look at today. And uh, we have Benedict solution, which tests for simple carbohydrates or monosaccharides. A negative test would be blue while a positive test would look orange. We have whoops, we have um, iodine solution which tests for complex carbohydrates or polysaccharides or starches and it turns a dark red for a negative test and um, a blue-black for a positive test. And we have Biorette solution, which um, tests for proteins and it'll turn a blue color. Uh, a negative test will look blue and a violet or a purple will be a positive test. And then we have two for lipids here, uh, Sudan um, 4 and uh, the brown paper bag test and for Sudan it'll turn a it'll be dark red um, but for a positive test you'll have these reddish orange what we call globules or like globs of you know the oils and the fat sitting on top and for the brown paper bag you'll have this like translucent color to the paper bag What is a standard? An acknowledged measure of comprehensions for uh, quantitative or qualitative value, um, the criteria. And that's the standard that we're going to use 
to um, identify the, the presence of um, these. Okay, tests for simple carbohydrates or monosaccharides or um, glucose. You remember we talked about glucose, fructose, we talked about um, glycogen, or I'm sorry, not glycogen, um, galactose, uh, or galactose, and we talked about ribose and deoxyribose. These are all simple sugars. They're made up of one sugar unit, um, a monosaccharide, and we use Benedict solution as a chemical indicator for simple sugars such as glucose. Benedict solution is naturally like this aqua blue. So if we put it in to a test tube with whatever we're wanting to test, and let's just say, okay, we wanted to know where a victim's last meal was, okay? So you're um, a pathologist and you've removed the uh, stomach contents and you want to know um, whether this is a uh, this test positive or or negative for um, a certain um, it, or you want to know where victim's last meal is and, and based on that you want to know if there's carbohydrates, lipids, nucleic or I'm sorry we can't test for nucleic and proteins. Okay, so here we have, we would place it into a test tube with the, the stomach contents. And we'd probably put, you know, somewhere between six to eight drops of Benedict solution. Um, and then we heat Benedict solution, the test tubes. And uh, if it turns a yellow, green, or brick red, or an orange color, this orange color, then we have a positive test. But if it stays that uh, bluish color like the Benedict solution then we know that there's not a simple sugar present. Okay so unlike the other indicator Benedict solution does not work at room temperature it must be heated first. Te a test for um, carbohydrates and I must have stopped putting iodine solution there. <laughs> Um, iodine solution is an indicator for a molecule called starch. And starch is a huge molecule made up of hundreds of simple sugar molecules, such as glucose, connected to each other. Now, if we take this complex carbohydrate, iodine, and, um, I'm sorry, this, if we took, you know, starch, um, and we placed it in a Benedict solution that tests for simple sugars, then you're not going, it will not test positive because it is a uh, complex carbohydrate. It is a polysaccharide and to um, identify the presence of a complex carbohydrate, you need to use iodine solution. An iodine solution is like this reddish orange color. So if you placed it, you know, with stomach contents, six to eight droplets, and there were, there was no starch present, then you would get this negative color, which is kind of like a, a reddish orange color. But if it was positive, say that person ate a lot of potatoes, then you would get this blue black color. Okay, now our test for proteins, or, and it says amino acids, but that should really say um, peptide bond. Because that's what Bioret solution actually tests for is a peptide bond between the amino acids. Um, so if you wanted to take the, the Bioret solution, the Bioret solution uh, is normally this blue color, and you placed it in stomach contents or with some stomach contents, and you wanted to know if there are proteins present. Say so you wanted to know if um, your victim ate it, um, ate some you know, chicken or something the night before, then you would have um, a dark violet blue to pinkish purple color. It's purple color. Um, but if it were negative, if they hadn't eaten any protein, then it would remain the bluish color that the biorets is when they 
it's placed in there. Okay, so tests for fats or lipids. Uh, we have Sudan 4, which like lipids, the chemical Sudan uh, 4 is not soluble in water and is, however, soluble in lipids. In this uh, test, dark red Sudan 4 is added to the solution along with ethanol to dissolve any possible lipids. And what will happen is, if lipids are present, the Sudan 4 will stain them a reddish orange. And what will happen is those lipids uh, will have this, these reddish orange globules or little droplets that form at the top of the, the test for a positive test. Um, if they're not present, that won't happen. Um, test for fats. And I'm sorry, I don't know why that says Sudan for their lipids. We have our brown, we also have a brown paper bag test that turns a translucent color in the presence of lipids. So here we have oil placed on here, and I don't know if you guys have ever, you know, gone to Five Guys and gotten uh, fries, but they love to throw those fries in the bottom of the bag. And what happens, you've got this greasy looking translucent color of a bag because those fries were fried in oil, and we all know that oils are a lipid. So um, if you place oil on this and water on another paper bag, I'm sure you know that if the water dries, it's going to dry and it's going to look like a normal paper bag. But if oil gets on there, it stays that greasy, translucent color. Here are two questions I want you to answer uh, at the bottom for your answer questions or your exit ticket questions. Why didn't the test tube containing sucrose change colors? Sucrose being table sugar or a disaccharide, why wouldn't it change colors in the presence uh, when running a Benedict's solution test? And then, why didn't the test containing starch change colors? If we have maltose and glucose and we're using Benedict's solution, why wouldn't starch change colors?